Xbox fans, how we feeling? In my opinion, Xbox just delivered one of their best showcases since last generation, since 2018. Some would even say they just delivered their best showcase ever, or at least one of their best showcases. And you know, and I wasn't really going to make this video. I spent like three hours and 45 minutes streaming the whole show, interacting with chat and all the fans that were really excited about what Xbox, Phil Spencer, Sarah Bond, the first party studios, and Bethesda had the show with Xbox Game Showcase and the Starfield Direct. But you know what? But you know what? I had to sit down, make a video about it, go over some of my thoughts for those of you that didn't want to watch my reaction. But I bet you you're feeling just as good as I am. While I wouldn't rate the show an A, I would say it's probably an A minus, B plus, depending on certain factors. But there were some games here that wowed me. Starfield looks incredible. Like when we saw it last year versus what we saw of it today, night and day. It looks like the delay has really helped. I don't know how they're actually going to deliver this game because it almost seems like five games in one. It seems impossible the things they're doing with Starfield, but that's why Xbox bought Bethesda. That's why the team believes that this could be the game of the generation. So yeah, no intro. You guys know who I am. Randall Thor 19, the man with the million. Hit the like button if you enjoy my content. If you enjoyed the Xbox game showcase and you're really excited about the future, and you know what, do me a favor as well, hit that subscribe button. Xbox easily had the showcase of the summer, which to be frank and honest, that's not really a high bar to clear. Jeff's show was better than the PlayStation showcase, but both of those were on the mediocre side. They had a couple good games here and there, but for the most part, they were boring. Like you're looking at your clock as it's going on, being like, when is this gonna be over? Or with the PlayStation show, you're wondering, when is this actually going to get good? But with this Xbox show, not only did they start off on fire showcasing stuff from first party, but my God, the Starfield Direct itself with that 40 minutes of Starfield goodness showing off everything the game has to offer with the combat and all the ship building things, they built a literal Voltron and all the things you can do in that game, that showcase just by itself was better than anything else. Starfield truly looks like the next generation of RPGs, and man, September 6th can't get here fast enough. Now, if you look online, there is a lot of really positive sentiment about this showcase. People seem to love it. Maybe I'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow when I read more articles, because basically all I've been doing is I watched the showcase again in 4K and everything looks so much better. And one of the reasons I think people are super excited about what they saw, because we got substantial updates for games that were announced in 2020 that look fantastic. And a lot of this was done without the help of the other studios at Bethesda or even Xbox Game Studios. They did all this and they didn't show State of Decay 3. They didn't show Perfect Dark. They didn't show Everwild. We still don't know what ZeniMax Online is working on. We don't know what Indiana Jones looks like let alone what id software's new game is going to be those are all things for future shows and what we got here was pretty damn good like i said b plus a minus and you know what it just missed that extra push to get it into that nine out of ten or ten out of ten area and i'll, I'll tell you what was my biggest disappointments which held it back but Let's go through game by game really quickly. Let me know what you thought about the showcase and what was your favorite moment from the show in the comments below. Because I have a feeling a lot of people are going to talk about Fable. Xbox surprised everybody by opening the show up with Fable. That tease that they did on social media, well, yeah, I guess all you naysayers who thought it wasn't a Fable tease look like idiots now because Fable is real and it looks spectacular. Of course, the talking point's going to be, was that really gameplay? It was labeled in game while other looks at games like Compulsion's title was labeled in engine, I believe. So that is a look at in game, what the game's actually going to look like. Obviously no HUD, so you don't get a sense of gameplay. There were kind of some quick snippets of what looked like could be gameplay, but mostly it looked like the cutscenes we would see in game. And it does have that fable humor. And I don't know what it is, but I was not expecting Jack and the Beanstalk with how it ended. 
But Playground Games is absolutely incredible. They make the best racing game out there. And now they're going to tackle action RPGs by bringing back a beloved franchise. And it seems to be going for a more realistic tone, more sort of Witcher vibes while keeping that British humor. And while we didn't get a really deep look at what the game plays like, at least now we can picture in our heads what sort of but at least now we can picture in our heads what it is going for the downside of course no year listed and with other games listed and dated for 2024 that means fable is probably targeting sometime in 2025 but this trailer if i had to rank all the announcements here starfield was by far the game of the show but another game was even higher rated but i would have fable as like the second coolest thing, third coolest thing at this showcase. But then we just kept it moving, kept it moving. Pacing was on point, not a lot of talking. All we had was Sarah Bond coming out to speak for a couple minutes, and at the end, Phil Spencer, and then a whole bunch of developers talking about Starfield. But for the most part, it was trailer after trailer. A lot of these games are on Game Pass. In fact, most of them, I think there's only four that aren't on Game Pass. So after we get a look at Fable from Playground Games, we finally get to see what Compulsion is working on. And it's a game called South of Midnight. And it certainly has a very highly stylized look to it, which you would expect from the makers of Contrast and We Happy Few. So you know the art design is going to be on point. Now in the Xbox Newswire blog, they did confirm that South of Midnight from Compulsion is a third person action adventure game. But you really wouldn't get that from this trailer because it seemed very much like a cutscene trying to show you the vibes, the aesthetic that it was going for, that southern gothicness that at least the early reports had that this game was trying to achieve. And I think it did that, at least for the artistic sense. We still have to wait to see what the game actually looks like in gameplay, but it's definitely on my radar now. Now, in my prediction video, I mentioned that Xbox really doesn't have big AAA games from third party. Well, I was proven wrong here because we got the very first look at Star Wars Outlaws from Ubisoft and Massive Entertainment, completely CGI, just kind of giving you the vibes of the game, who the main character is, and sort of the setting. I believe it's in between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. It did end by saying, you know what, tune in tomorrow for the Ubisoft Forward to get a look at gameplay. But it was really cool to see Star Wars at the show because I was not expecting it. Then we had Sarah Bond show up to talk a little bit about diversity and the games coming to Xbox and all that sort of stuff. Leading into 33 Immortals, which is an indie game from the makers of Spirit Fair. It's kind of like it's kind of like a co-op roguelike action game with 33 people. I don't know how exactly that's all going to work out, but the idea of 33 people playing together at once with that incredible art style kind of remind me a little bit of Hades, even though I wasn't really interested in the type of game they made before with Spirit Fair. This one is definitely something I'm gonna check out when it launches on Game Pass. We had the announcement of Payday 3. I'm not a big fan of the franchise. Some of my friends are, but it's not for me. It is launching this September and is day one on Game Pass. We had the Persona game that was leaked by Atlas themselves show up. Persona 3 Reload, which is a remake of Persona 3. As someone who's not a fan, or at least has never played a Persona game, these sort of things I look at, and it doesn't excite me whatsoever. Now, I need to change that. I need to play Persona 5 or something, and if I enjoy that, maybe I would play Persona 3. But when you look online, man, the Persona fans, they are not only incredibly excited about Persona 3 Reload, they're excited about Persona 5 Tactical and the other brand new game, that Atlas announced, which is called Metaphor Re Fantazo, which is coming out next year. Now, it's really great to see Xbox and Atlas get close together. You can definitely tell from these games and the other Japanese games that Microsoft decided to showcase that they are really trying to get more and more Japanese support for the Xbox ecosystem. Fans have demanded that, and Phil Spencer, Sarah Bond, and everybody at Xbox are trying to actually make it happen. You know, years ago, I never thought we would see an Atlas game on Xbox, 
Now we have the Atlas games announced first for Xbox. It does make me wonder what is going to happen with Persona 6 whenever that is announced. Will it be a PlayStation exclusive or has Atlas completely embraced the idea of being multi-platform and supporting Xbox? Then we got another surprise right after Persona 3 Reload with the first look gameplay of Avowed. Now, I thought Avowed was gonna open the show and I thought Fable was gonna close. So the fact that Fable opened and then we got a Avowed soon after, I was thinking to myself, oh my God, what's gonna close the show? But yeah, we got a nice gameplay look at Avowed. I know there's a lot of talk on social media about how the game looks. Some people think it looks different than the initial CGI iconography they showed in the first trailer, and it sort of does. That first trailer seemed a little bit darker, but when I had seen gameplay of it in 2021, this is exactly what I imagined. I imagined a brighter version of Skyrim, and that seems to be what Obsidian is going for. They're making their version of Skyrim. It kind of seems like a cross between Outer Worlds and Skyrim. So while you don't necessarily play Obsidian games for the graphics, and this isn't going to be, oh my God, look at the hyper-realistic graphics that Avowed is going for. People play Obsidian games for the story, and people really love the universe that they've created in the Pillars franchise, which this is a part of. So while I understand all the talk about the game not being a graphical showpiece, but I don't think it was ever designed to be a graphical showpiece. Obsidian is going to make the games they want to make. We did get a window for the game. It is supposed to be launching sometime in 2024. We got to what I thought was maybe the lower part of the show here when Microsoft started to delve into their live service stuff. I'm just not a fan when they do this, when they talk about Sea of Thieves, which it is cool. Sea of Thieves is getting an expansion in partnership with Lucasfilm, The Legend of Monkey Island, and I know all the Sea of Thieves fans are really excited to see it, but for me, I just sort of zone out. Same thing when they show off this new Microsoft Flight Sim, or at least they call it new, it's like updated for the next generation, has a whole bunch of different activities you can do, but I already know I'm not gonna play it. I played the first game for 20 minutes and I deleted it, and while I understand it has its fans, this isn't for me. Then finally, we get to the game that I wanted to see the most. And this is the reason why this showcase to me is a B plus low A, A minus, when it really should have been an A or an A plus, and that's Senua's Saga Hellblade 2. Melissa took the stage to talk about how they just wrapped the game, the performance capture, and what we were about to see was captured on the Xbox Series X. And I was praying for a look at the combat because that is the thing that I want to see the most at this point. We had seen the two previous trailers and this is the third time we were gonna see it. So I thought we would get a look at the combat and those things, but it was just another segment of a gameplay where you'd walk forward and it took you into a cutscene. Now, don't get me wrong. What I think we saw was absolutely amazing, stunning, whatever adjectives you wanna use. And I was getting goosebumps because I love Hellblade Senua Saga and it looks like they've retained everything about the storytelling and the atmosphere that I loved from the first game. And when she got dragged down in that water, I'm like, oh, here we go. When, when all the voices were chirping in the ear, I'm like, this is a game I need to play. Hopefully it's coming this year. No, coming in 2024, hopefully earlier in the year. But yeah, the lack of combat gameplay, even though the whole thing was gameplay, it was clearly somebody controlling Senua as she walked up to something and then the cutscene took over. It was pretty damn seamless. At this point, I want to see the combat, the puzzle solving, or whatever else you do in the game. Maybe we'll see that on Tuesday with the extended showcase. As we know, Hellblade 2 is there and there's supposed to be gameplay demos of stuff there. So I'm crossing my fingers, hoping we see it at this show. But that was really the one big disappointment for me was the lack of combat gameplay and the over-reliance on live service, even though I understand from a business reason why you need to do it. Then we got a trailer for Yakuza 8, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, and it's really cool to see Yakuza on the Xbox, another franchise that I thought would never make the jump over to PlayStation, but now they have, 
And now they're actually revealing brand new games, new installments on Xbox. It's pretty exciting for fans of the Yakuza franchise that they can play it on Xbox day one. So that relationship between Sega and Xbox is getting pretty tight with Atlas and Yakuza and all that stuff. It's something to keep your eye on. Then we had a Fallout 76 trailer and I went to sleep because I don't care. Then we had a brand new game from Capcom that caught my attention. I thought to myself, this could be a minutia, right? But it's not, it's a brand new IP coming to Game Pass on day one and it looks visually interesting. We'll see how it plays whenever it does come out. Forza Motorsport took the stage literally showing off the cover cars and they had a new trailer. It was short, thank God. We'll see more of it on Tuesday. And the release date, which leaked, was confirmed for October 10th. We had another trailer that put me to sleep, Elder Scrolls Online, which, I mean, that's a common theme here. The live service stuff just puts me to sleep. It makes me zone out. It makes me look at the clock because I just don't care about these games. Overwatch 2 showed up again. Another live service stuff I don't care about. Persona 5 Tactical, which is launching this year on Game Pass. Nice to see Atlas and Xbox have what seems to be a pretty good relationship. Then we got a trailer for Starfield in the main show, despite the Starfield Direct coming later. And this trailer was absolutely amazing. It got me so pumped for the game to the point where I was like, wait a minute, is Alan Wake 2 my most anticipated game for the fall? Like, sure, I was looking forward to Starfield, absolutely. But it was always in my top five, my top seven. Alan Wake 2, Spider-Man 2 were always higher. But after watching that trailer, and after watching the Starfield Direct, I'm telling you, Starfield has rocketed up, in my opinion. Now I don't know what I'm anticipating more. Is it Alan Wake 2 or is it Starfield? They might be combined because what they showed was just so damn good. <sighs> they, if they can deliver on all their promises, what, what the game seems to be doing, this could be an all-time game, man. Then we got a couple indie games, Jassant from Dontnod, which seemed to be like a climbing narrative adventure. I'm interested in it. We got a game from the Chinese room called Still Wakes the Deep, a narrative horror game, which is something that really sparked my interest. Seems like you're stuck on an oil rig. Oh man, that is a game I'm playing day one. We got another game called Dungeons of Hinterberg. It didn't really interest me much, but that's coming to Game Pass as well. Keanu Reeves showed up to talk about Cyberpunk 2077, Phantom Liberty, which is launching on September 26th, the big expansion to cyberpunk and they showed a trailer which was jaw dropping and it made me want to play cyberpunk right now haven't played it yet always said i was gonna wait playing diablo 4 right now so i'm sort of busy but i definitely want to play cyberpunk before this expansion comes out because that trailer the way it was cut all the different cool things that i saw man I'm really excited for this. And I haven't even played Cyberpunk yet. I have a lot of content to get through. We had a trailer for City Skylands 2 show up here coming to Game Pass Day 1 in October for all the people that love their 4X city building games. Not for me, but I know a lot of people love it. After that, we had Stoic finally talking about Project Belfry, which is called Towerborn. And it does resemble a little bit of that Castle Crashers side-scrolling beat-em-up with a really interesting art style. Although this one might be as polarizing as say Pentiment was when it was first showed off. People had an idea of Pentiment in their head and then what they showed wasn't matching what they thought it should be. Same thing might happen here with Towerborn, but either way, the game is launching sometime in 2024. Then we got the best new announcement of the show and it came from In Exile. And it sort of seems to me that if Starfield Direct wasn't a part of this whole showcase, this game, Clockwork Revolution by In Exile, would have been the last thing. Now, In Exile is one of those developers that I haven't really gotten into their games. Wasteland 3 is not something that had interested me. But when we had heard about Project Cobalt, the steampunk RPG first person shooter, eh, I gotta say, my interest was piqued. But now, this is one of my most anticipated games from the first party because it is really giving me that Bioshock steampunk vibes with time travel. There's time travel involved, and you guys know I'm an absolute nut for time travel. And the snippets of gameplay we got with the cool weapons, fighting the robots, and even sort of like a big daddy hulking robot being able to like rewind time. Whoa, I did not expect this from In Exile. 
But now you have my attention and I cannot wait to learn more about this game. Then we had Phil Spencer come out on stage, talk about what we had just seen, the games that are launching this fall, the games that are coming in 2024. Then they did mention that the supply for the Xbox Series X has been improved and that there is a new Xbox Series S coming to market. It is a black version of the Xbox Series S with more storage, a one terabyte SSD instead of the 512 gigabyte SSD the Series S currently has, but it does come at an increased price of $349. And then finally, we come to the Starfield Direct, 40 minutes of just insane goodness. I don't even know where to begin here. I've talked about it as the game of the show. I am so incredibly excited for Starfield. The combat looked way improved. The cities looked way better. It seemed like the delay did what it was supposed to do, make the game better for the developers to realize their vision, even though it is disappointing that it's stuck or at least locked at 30 frames on the Xbox Series X and S. I'm gonna play it day one regardless on console. They never promised a 60 FPS version like Redfall. But either way, Starfield is going to be one of the biggest games of this generation. One of the biggest games for Xbox period and God knows how long. It almost seems too good to be true. When you look at all the things Todd Howard and the team are talking about, you get a sense that nobody else is creating games like this. Nobody else is even attempting to make games like this. It sounds like truly one of the most ambitious games ever, and I hope they nail it. Even the tease at the end with the space magic, I was like, dude, I need this game immediately. And there's even early access, five days early access, so they're doing the whole Forza stuff. I was so impressed by the Starfield Direct and I really enjoyed watching the showcase. Xbox delivered when they needed to the most. Look, I know just from looking at the recording clock here that this video is gonna be really long and I hope you guys really enjoyed it. So if you did, hit the like button and subscribe. But this is really all I wanted from Xbox. I wanted to see what the roadmap is. I wanted to see updates from first party. I wanted to see new announcements and we got all that. My disappointment just comes in on the fact that we didn't see any combat from Hellblade 2, which is the one thing I really wanted to see from that game. I don't need to see more of the story or the voice acting. I'm sold on the franchise. I'm sold on the game. Show me how the gameplay is actually improved. And that is what is keeping my score at a low A minus B plus instead of that A, A plus that a lot of people feel, that 10 out of 10 or 9 out of 10. And the over-reliance on live service is just straight up boring to me. Right? It's boring during the PlayStation showcases. It's boring during Jeff's show. It's boring during the Xbox's show. I don't care. I'm just going to speak my mind. It's just boring. I understand why they do it. They're big franchises and it's all business at the end of the day, but it all just makes my eyes glaze over. So Xbox delivered when they had to. They killed it. I'm super excited about the future. As I always said, I viewed Redfall as a speed bump, but it looks like Xbox has a great 2024 plan and potentially a great 2025 and beyond. And they did this without delving into some of their other bigger games like Perfect Dark or any of the new announcements from Bethesda, let alone potentially stuff from ABK if they acquire them. So Xbox did exactly what they needed to do. So I'm really happy with what Xbox showed. I hope you are too. Let me know what you think about everything in the comments below. And as always, hit the like button, please subscribe. Check out the Xbox 2 Patreon in the description. Love you guys. Sorry the video was so long, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.